Uh, the circumstances that led my, my sons coming into foster care were I was struggling for many years with drug addiction. I became homeless and uh, made some really bad decisions along that way in reference to my kids' safety and of course along with my drug addiction all the choices were really bad. And I eventually came in contact with uh, child welfare. They removed my children and um, my sister was taking care of them. She realized she didn't want to do it anymore and contacted Mr. Volk who graciously welcomed my sons into his home. Yes, I've known Kim and her family most their life. Uh, I have a local grocery store, small time grocery store, and so um, Kim and her family would come into the store and I knew the boys and I kind of knew somewhat of the situation mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of, you know, weighed back. I had done foster care and I kind of knew where this was going to be going, but just kind of watched it unfold. The support I gave Kim and, and other families that had been in my home was uh, just a non-judgmental uh, attitude. Um, I just wanted her to um, get her sobriety and get her um, get her life back together. And, and I encouraged her and said we could get the kids back with you as soon as we get some of these things straightened out. And um, just supported her in her sobriety and, and never judged. I, I'm a single foster parent, was a single foster parent. Um, and it was also nice to have the families come over and um, and spend time with the kids and maybe even cook a meal for us and not just her kids but for our whole family. Uh, the other kids in my home liked Kim and, and they liked when she came over to visit with us. And uh, my only rule was that you just came over clean and sober and that you um, kind of didn't really talk about the circumstances of which why the kids were there or or blame the county or blame, you know, other people for the the situation because the, I, the kids didn't really need to hear that and Kim was very respectful of that. It was, uh, it was very <coughs> comfortable because Dennis never let me forget that I was the parent. And he was fair, again, as I said before, um, I respected the boundaries and, and rules that he put in place for my sons whether I agree with them or not was not the point. The fact of the matter was that that's where they were, but he never stopped letting me know that I was the mother. He included me in decisions educationally. He let me know when they had medical appointments. He actually went outside the guidelines of the county sometimes. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, Jamel would catch the bus around the corner from the treatment center I was at just so I could see him every day and he could wave. So those are things that didn't allow to happen just to make me feel secure and reassure me that he was really, really interested in reunifying my, my, my sons with me. I never got the feeling that he was trying to keep them from me ever. Building trust with Dennis wasn't hard at all because I trusted him way before my children were placed with him. So I already knew that they were in one of the best places they could be. Because my family at that time, you know, weren't interested in taking place with my son and, you know, the the beauty of this whole thing was my sons told me that they very, they felt more welcome with Dennis than they did if they were with a family member. And that's huge when your kids aren't with you, when you know that they're safe. Mm -hmm. So it was really, it was the best place, place that they could be. And Dennis always, again, supported the relationship between me and my children, always. Well, this real unification with Kim was a little bit different because I'd already known her because I'd been in the community such a long time and I knew a lot of the families. Um, but the other families where I didn't know the parents, um, for instance, one family, uh, because I was single, because I was not Hispanic, because I was not, um, you know, um, a, a, a f we weren't what they would consider a family because it was a single parent running the household. Um, they would criticize and they would uh, say this is not good for my son, this is not good for my daughter because I had raised some girls too. And um, as they got to know me, as I built trust with them, then they knew that the placement for their child was the best. One of my, uh, although I identify as a foster adopt family, 
I much prefer to do foster and get the kids back to their families. If that all fails, then I, I go for adoption and then try to keep the children and the family still together. So uh, the biggest reality or, or uh, thing for me is to reunify the children. The children want to be with the parents and the parents want to be with the children. There are just some things that have happened in their life that kind of put them off balance and off place. And, and though the kids really want to be with their parents, and that's one of the goals that I try to you know, uh, make is to get them back together, whether it's through me adopting and them integrating into my family, or whether they go back to their families, and then we all kind of party together, you know, during the year. Wow, Dennis. Dennis, when my children were coming to visit, he made sure that I could come in the store and get the snacks and the Zoom Zooms and the Wham Whams and the cereal, the milk, whatever I didn't have in the home. He would transport my sons to the transitional community I was living in to make sure that they got there for their visitation. He did a lot more than, unfortunately, a lot of foster parents do now. So uh, he was there. He made sure they got where they were supposed to be. He made sure that we had what we needed. He was very, very supportive of that whole process. He did whatever he could to make my sons feel comfortable, and he did whatever he could to let me know that he was my one of my biggest cheerleaders in making sure that I was going to reunify with my sons. But at the same time, he did say, if you don't reunify, they can stay here as long as they need to. As soon as he said that, I was like, no, nah, I'm getting my boys back. We're, they're coming home. Love you, but they're coming home. I, I just could add to that. Um, I think one of the things that Kim and I did very well, and what I can do, what I did with most of my families is that um, we continued to parent together. The kids knew that we would parent together, and her youngest son especially would um, he would try to make Kim feel very guilty, and he would try to hold back his love or hold back his his. Um, he would just kind of hold back from her until he got what he wanted from her. And I would talk to Kim and say, then don't let him come home this weekend. If he doesn't, if he feels that way, then just say you stay at Dennis's this weekend. And sometimes she would take her older son. And uh, then Jelani, the younger one, would feel like, okay, well, they're not playing with me, so I have to kind of get back to that situation. So he, Kim and I stayed on the same page. And when we had things that we disagreed with or had a thing about, it was never discussed in front of the kids.